When Egyptians took to the streets of Cairo last year, marchers made their way through police barricades and past the institutions of power, such as government buildings and political party headquarters. Hour by hour, the crowds grew until thousands filled Tahrir Square. On the march through the city, journalist Ayo Batraoui was there. I'm standing here in a protest that has turned into a march of thousands of people, young and old, rich and poor, men and women, religious and secular. They are are taking to the streets today on January 25th for what has been called the Day of Revolution. During the following months, Aya reported for FSRN on the revolution, bringing us stories of police cracking down on protesters, women calling for a stronger voice in shaping government and civil society, and youth pushing back against military trials and detention. She joins us now from Cairo, where she's been monitoring today's events as well. Aya, good to have you with us. Thank you. As we heard in the previous report, one year later, there are different views about how far Egypt has come and where it is headed. What have you been hearing one year later as you're there in Tahrir Square? I've been hearing in Tahrir Square the same thing I heard exactly one year ago today, which is that people are demanding the downfall of the regime. People feel that Mubarak was exhausted, that his regime is intact, and that is because the military council took power after Mubarak was ousted is the same military council under him, and it is led by the same military ruler who was his defense minister for 20 years. They are saying that their calls for freedom, democracy, and social equality has not come true. They are saying that the military has yet to prove its uh, words which say that they are behind the revolution. They are saying that if the military was truly behind the revolution, 100 protesters would not have died in clashes with security forces since the military council took power. And they're saying that till today, only one police officer has been found guilty, and he was tried in absentia. And upon his return to Cairo, he was given a retrial. Last year in Tahrir Square, you spoke to a number of people who were involved in the protest. One of them was a young woman named Sarah Abdel Rahman. This is the first time that I join a protest or go down in the streets or, or do anything like that in my life. And, and, and it's really working. There's so many people here and it's so safe. Everyone I know, I, did, I didn't even know that they, they were coming. And they showed up and this is just amazing. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, probably just in a, in a football match or something. But this time it's real. So. What is the one thing you want to see? Uh, a free country, democracy something change, any kind of change. You know, presidents have gone and and, and come back and and we still have the same guy. So maybe some change would be nice. That's Sarah Abdil Rahman speaking one year ago in Tahrir Square. Your thoughts about the sentiments she expresses and what that means today. You know, it's really ironic because a year later, the same demand that Sarah stood in Tahrir Square calling for is the same demand people are asking for today. They're saying that democracy is not just about elections. Democracy means changing the old system that was in place for so long. It means bringing people to justice. It means that everyone falls under the jurisdiction of the law and that no entity has more power than another, which includes the military rulers who have ruled this country for over 60 years. And so people are calling for the same thing. And they're saying that there have been changes, but not enough not what all these people have gone out into the streets for. And so essentially people today are saying, this is not a day of celebration. This is a day to continue the revolution that they started one year ago. And they're planning on staying in the square until those demands are met. And until the military council makes very clear what kind of jurisdiction they're going to have and what kind of jurisdiction and and authority the elected parliament will have in writing the upcoming constitution, in choosing the next president, in removing emergency laws, and all of the other demands that people went out exactly one year calling for. That's journalist Aya Batrawi speaking to us from Cairo on the one-year anniversary of the beginning of the protests in Egypt. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dorian.